Are you thinking of investing in commercial or maybe residential property? Maybe you've heard commercial property is all the rave, but is it really as good as it sounds? In this video, I'll be going over the pros and cons of both commercial and residential property, and I'll end with my opinion. Now, I have a large residential property portfolio. However, I have let many commercial properties, I've managed commercial properties, and I've also helped develop a commercial property. Not only this, but I've got many friends that specialize in commercial property. Therefore, I'm drawing upon all my experience and my friends, my contacts, to put together this video, the pros and the cons of commercial and residential property, which is best for you. Now, before we begin, I do apologize for the bags under my eyes. Um, we do have a, uh, a very new addition to the family who is definitely keeping us awake at night. However, it's really important that I take out the time and carve the time to make this video because I get asked this question every single week, more or less. Marco, should I invest in residential or or commercial property and we're going to get straight into it. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Marco. I'm a portfolio landlord, property investor, developer and mentor and I'm incredibly passionate about helping people invest in property. So let's start off with commercial property and we're going to go over the pros and the advantages of investing in commercial property. Number one, generally in commercial property your yield is your net yield. Well what do I mean by this? So if you're investing in commercial property and letting this property out on an FRI lease, which basically means the tenant is responsible for more or less the whole building and all the repairs, then actually there's very little management in terms of you know, maintaining that building because the tenant's job and they're responsible for maintaining that building. Therefore, you aren't really going to have the maintenance costs that you may incur, say, on a residential property where landlords are responsible for you know the structural parts of the property and, and also the internals to some extent. So this is why I say your yield is really more or less your net yield. Yes, you may have one or two costs to incur to run the property, but it's very standard that most costs are taken on by the tenant. So as we just alluded to maintenance and insurance and things of that nature. So the second benefit of commercial property is typically, and I say typically, you will get a higher yield investing in commercial property than you would do in residential. And the reason for this is as follows. Firstly, commercial property is seen as a greater risk. And therefore, if something is a greater risk, you have to have a greater return to compensate for that risk, right? So that's one reason why yields are typically slightly higher in commercial property. However, there's another real key reason why this is also. And that's because the majority of people that invest in commercial property do so for an income and they'll buy it based on a yield. Whereas if we come over to residential property, that's slightly different. Some investors in the residential property game don't necessarily buy for an income. Maybe they're buying because they anticipate this residential property is going to increase in value in the 5, 10, 15, 20 years to come. But with commercial property, it's not as simple as that you know with a residential area you could buy in a really nice area you know an area with low crime high percentage of owner occupiers you know good schools great transport links good employers and you could you know be reasonably confident that in 10 years time the value of that residential property is going to be much higher however the commercial property that isn't necessarily the case because the value of the commercial property is really dictated by the income that property is generating the third benefit of investing in commercial property is that leases tend to be longer than residential agreements. So for example, you could you know, check in a, a tenant into your commercial property and sign a five, six, seven year lease, right? Whereas in the residential world, that doesn't normally happen. You know, Normally you'll be signing for six or 12 months on an AST contract. And if we follow this point on one step further, because we've got tenants in our building for longer in our commercial property, therefore we're re-letting this commercial property less than we would be doing on the residential property. Maybe every two or three years, we're re-letting this residential property property. Whereas maybe actually it's every five years we're reletting the commercial premises. So therefore, you know, if you're an investor and time is very valuable to you and maybe you might manage the properties yourself, well, maybe you want a bit more of a hands-off approach and commercial property could be for you. However, you could also an instruct an agent and rather than do all that hard work yourself, you could be investing in residential over here and have the agent do this on your behalf. The fourth benefit of investing in commercial property is that there tends to be, again, typically depending on which type of commercial space you're letting out, less rules and regs compared to residential property. So therefore, you know, any landlords that are looking to invest in this particular, you know, commercial premises over here may find it a little easier if they don't already have that skill set because there's less rules, there's less, less regulation to read up on. And maybe as a result, you can get away with managing and letting out this property yourself rather than using an agent over here that obviously knows all the rules and regs for you. The fifth 
benefit of commercial property is that you can invest in commercial property through a pension scheme. Now, this isn't the right channel to be talking about pensions, really. However, you can't do this in residential. So if you're investing in commercial property and you have money within your pension scheme, there is an option to do this. Again, you can research it, ask an independent financial advisor. Maybe you can join some pension groups, some SIP groups, and understand how to do this and invest in commercial property through your pension. So there are the benefits of investing in commercial property. And as I've kind of already alluded to within these points, commercial property can be a more passive way of investing in property. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're investing in an office block with 50 serviced offices, that is certainly not a passive way to make money. In fact, that's a very, very active way to be investing in property. However, if you're investing in a premises and you're letting it out on a five, six, seven year lease, then there's very little that really you will need to be doing. Again, if it's an FRI lease, the tenant is responsible for that building. You can pass on the insurance cost to them as well. And really you can kind of let and forget about it, right? Happy days. Now let's come on to residential property and talk about the pros and the advantages here. And by the very nature of discussing these, we'll also touch upon the disadvantages for both as well. In my opinion, the number one pro of investing in residential property is every single person needs a roof over their head. And because of this, there's always going to be a demand for residential properties in the right area. You know, everyone needs shelter. It's a basic human need. However, if we contrast this with commercial property over here, does every single business need a premises? No. In fact, COVID has perfectly illustrated this. You know, people can work from home and therefore businesses don't need a physical place to locate themselves. So this is why personally I like investing in residential property because everyone needs somewhere to live and businesses don't physically need that premises any longer. Now the second benefit of investing in residential property is that I think that the capital appreciation is a bit clearer and easier to understand and forecast in residential property compared to commercial. Because as I've already mentioned in the video so far, if you're investing in good areas with strong fundamentals, there's a high probability that the value of that residential property is going to increase in the decades to come. However, it's somewhat difficult to invest in commercial property with capital appreciation in mind, because as I've already alluded to, the way how we increase the value of the commercial property is really to increase the rents. So yes, if you found a great commercial opportunity where you can increase the rents and add value there, that's absolutely great. However, if you're looking for specific areas to invest in, this just becomes a little bit harder compared to residential property. The third pro of investing in residential property is that typically you can borrow up to 75% of the purchase price using a standard mortgage, which is absolutely great. And we can use power of leverage to buy more properties and increase our gains. However, when we compare this to commercial property, typically we're only allowed to borrow 70% of the purchase price. So you can't borrow as much when it comes to commercial property. Yes, you may be able to get a, you know, a risky, expensive short-term bridging loan for more than 70% of the purchase price. But when we're talking, you know, standard mortgages, you know, 75% on the residential side, and we've got 70% at the commercial side. So number four, the fourth advantage of investing in residential compared to commercial, and this is follows on very nicely from the previous point, is that it's cheaper to finance residential property than it is commercial property. So whatever rate you can get now for a residential property, you have to add at least a percent or two, and that's what you're going to be charged to borrow just for something commercial. I like to use the wedding analogy here. For anyone who's got married, you'll know exactly what I mean. If you're getting married and you're looking to get a cake for your wedding party, well, as soon as you mention the word wedding, the price doubles. And it's pretty much the exact same when it comes to commercial property. The lenders will charge you a premium simply just because it's commercial. The fifth advantage when it comes to residential property is that residential property is typically less volatile. But what do I mean here? So when we're in a recession, commercial values tend to decrease more than residential property. And therefore, residential property is seen as slightly safer and less volatile. And again, this is reflected in the interest rate that lenders will charge to you. So a lender will charge you a lower interest rate for investing in residential property over here than commercial property, typically because the risk is less in a residential property. Now, the last advantage I've got to share with you here today when it comes to investing in residential property is that I think, in my opinion, you have a higher chance of getting your rent in from a residential property 
property than a commercial property. And let me explain why. So as I've mentioned, people need a roof over their heads. Therefore, most people are going to want to pay rent for that privilege. Yes, there are a very small minority that are troublemakers, but believe me, most people are good and most people want to pay their rent. Now, when it comes to residential property, there's so many ways you can protect yourself. First of all, you can ask your tenant for a guarantor. So someone can be responsible for that tenant should they fail to pay their rent, which is absolutely great. But another thing that's really important, if that tenant does not pay their rent, you have the option of taking it further. And you know, no one wants a CCJ against their name. So there's one reason why tenants are more likely to pay their rent. Whereas we come over to companies over here, by the very nature of limited liability, there's nothing really stopping a company from closing down and therefore not paying your rent. So in my opinion, it's easier to get paid and it's easier to recover your rent by investing in residential property rather than commercial property and as we've already mentioned so far in the video you know most businesses don't need a physical presence yes some do maybe they're you know a manufacturing business and have an industrial type commercial premises but actually bog standard small companies that require office space they can quite happily do without that so there we have it the advantages and disadvantages to both commercial and residential property now what's my opinion well as you probably guessed throughout the duration of this video so far I do have a strong preference for residential property now I I personally see residential property as less riskier. I see it as a way to future-proof your investments as I like to invest in areas which I think will appreciate in value over time. And But most importantly, I've just got a passion for residential property. I personally enjoy putting a roof over people's heads and I think you're actually doing a good thing by providing decent quality residential accommodation. However, do you have a question? Maybe you've got a question about commercial or residential. Pop it below in the comments. As you know, I respond to all comments personally now here's the thing, if I don't know the answer to that commercial question that you posted, I will ask one of my contacts, one of my friends, and we will get back to you. So I hope this video has given you a bit of an idea on the pros and cons of commercial versus residential. Now you all know I've got a preference for residential, but what to do next? So here's a video that you should consider watching. Is it worth investing in student housing? Is it worth investing in HMOs? It's a really good question. It's a question that's been asked for about 10 years now, and there's lots of content around this question. The link is in the description. You'll see a picture of the thumbnail somewhere over here. Watch this video next and I'm sure you'll get value from it. Thank you very much for watching the video. I really do hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Goodbye.